So if you're looking for the best settings for the Fujifilm X-H2S, then I'm here to walk you through all of my settings. Um, I can't guarantee they'll be the best settings, but it is kind of how I've had my cameras set up before um, and then implementing some new things from the X-H2S. Um, again, I've used Fujifilm professionally for three years now and uh, I've learned a lot about it. And so let's dive into those settings. Uh, let's crack a cold one here. <coughs> lot just went wrong there. I cracked it. It got all over my <coughs> XH2. Um, I just choked on it. Uh, that couldn't have gone worse. So you will start out by clicking the menu button and it picks up where you left off, um, which is... I guess good, but also bad. I don't know if I like that. Before it started on my menu, and maybe I'm missing something, but it used to always go to my menu, which wasn't the end of the world, um, because that's where all of my frequently things, frequently needed items were. Um, anyway, we will skip movie setting list. Um, shooting mode is always going to be manual for me. This is kind of more for advanced shooters. You'll kind of notice through everything here. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to be in manual mode for every setting. Um, movie mode is also going to be something we'll go over later. So we're going to go over those later because we're going to talk through my custom settings for, um, you know, my C1 through, I technically have C5 saved right now. Um, and at the end of this video or near the end, we'll talk through what those custom settings are for me for, um, a wedding day and also some corporate work. So we'll skip that for now. High speed recording is also on a custom setting. Now media record settings. I have as always one plus two, except for the codex where you can't do one plus two. And we'll talk about that later. The next thing is HDMI output settings. I currently have HDMI output info display on because we're recording with the Ninja. Generally, you'll want it off. You do want HDMI record control on in case you have a monitor that can um, record. So like the Ninja or the Blackmagic Assist. Raw output setting is something you will adjust um, on a basis of if you're wanting to record um, ProRes RAW or if you are wanting to record B-RAW. In this case, we're not going to be doing that. Um, I might have a video in the future about that, but for now, that's not what we're doing. Fix movie crop magnification. You're gonna hear me while going through this say that I have a custom button for that. This is one where I have a custom button for. Uh, we will go through all my custom buttons and then my custom settings near the end. Um, so know that we will have this for a custom button and I'll explain why in a little bit. F-Log recording. So this is really your call. Um, I, for the longest time, used uh, Eterna um, with dynamic range 400 and it looked great. Um, I have since moved to F-Log and now I'm testing F-Log too. Uh, I would probably stay away from HLG. Um, but yeah, all that to say, uh, that is really your personal preference. I can do some more videos on those um, and their differences if you'd like. Um, so yeah, that's up to you. I am testing F-Log2 right now, so we're going to stick with that. Data level setting. From my understanding, you're going to want this to be full on anything that's not ProRes. Um, I... I would love if someone was more knowledgeable on this to explain it to me um, on what, like why there is video range. Um, but at the end of the day, you're going to have a lot more information in the brights and the darks, and it will be clipped in video range um, if your NLE is not able to um, yeah, differentiate the things. I know DaVinci, you can change the range. Um, and so long story short, keep it at full, um, unless it's ProRes. And then I think ProRes, you're going to want it at video. I would love for someone to, uh, explain more in detail in the comment section. If you do know about ProRes and data ranges and all that. 
Photometry, I leave it as multi. Um, you can adjust it how you want. You can also set it to a custom button, but I, I like a general readout of, um, yeah, my exposure because I use other, I use tons of tools to get my exposure right. And so that's where we're at with that. Flickerless, I have tried this and I have not noticed much of a difference. Um, I do want to experiment with it more, but currently I have it as off. Um, and I will just adjust my frame rate if I need to, um, or my shutter speed if I need to, and I have some uh, flickers. IS mode, I have been, I used to have it off on the X-T4, and I have been heavily leaning and enjoying this one. I, I don't really want the uh, digital, image digital image stabilization. However, I've been leaving this on. Um, and it's been working great. Boost mode, I have off. I do have it in my menu for accessing. However, I don't think I will use it much because it has some IBIS looking motions to it. Um, so yeah, the ISO is going to be a use case. So I don't, I really don't know why it's even in here, um, in the menu system. It seems kind of odd to me. Zebra setting, I have set to a custom button. I set it to 95% because I use other exposure tools to get um, the skin tones right. And so I actually use external monitors with false colors. Um, if you don't have access to that, then you can um, look up what IRE level you should have it for zebras. I think it's like 50% or something. And you'll want to expose the skin tones with zebras maybe. I find it highly distracting. Um, and so false colors are great for that. Movie optimized control, I leave off. It just messes me up with my finger adapter. Um, it doesn't seem very useful. I don't ever do onboard recording. Um, and so I have no need to like to not have noise with my with my settings and all that. Tally light, I like nothing on the front because <laughs> I don't want a client to know if I forgot to do a take. You, you know how it is. Sometimes you thought you hit record and then you hit stop and then it starts rolling. Um, <laughs> this is ridiculous. But and then sometimes I'm like, oh, you know what? We could really let's do this take one more time. All that to say, um, I like to leave the front off. The rear I have is flashing because sometimes I will be far away from a camera and I want to be able to see that it's flashing. Um, and so that's where we're at. I don't have a fan and I also don't think we need a fan. Uh, I do have a video coming up in the next couple days about overheating. And so, uh, stay tuned for that. The next is the custom settings and this will be however you want to set each of your custom settings. And we'll go through all of my, I have five custom settings assigned. We'll go through all those later. Um, but that is a, uh, per use case situation. Auto update custom settings I have is disabled. I had this at the beginning and I didn't like it because um, anytime I would change anything, um, my Kelvin or anything, it would change um, to the next time I switched from C1 to C2 or whatever it would be that Kelvin volume that I left it off on. Or if I just made a minor change, like uh, for this um, one shoot, I want to not have um, noise reduction on, then it would always have noise reduction off of it until I changed it back. And I really wanted these five settings that I have to be a baseline, and then I can adjust things on a per use cases, um, which I don't see myself probably doing that much. Custom mode setting um, is going to be what you want each dial to be for. I currently have five for video and I haven't even touched the photo ones yet, um, but this is just a video settings um, video or instructional. So um, yeah, maybe we'll talk through some photo settings later, but that's where we're at with this. And now I'm gonna take a drink because that was, that was a lot. That's good. That's good. Okay. IQ. I like to adjust white balance on a Kelvin um, scale, and I do this uh, with a custom button. And so, yeah, we can access this with a custom button. We don't have to go into the menu system. I have my sharpness, and 
uh, noise reduction all the way down. I would rather do all of that in post. And generally, I maybe do a little bit of noise reduction, but I do zero. Um, I, I hardly ever increase sharpness because I think this image is sharp enough. Um, I have interframe noise reduction off. I have just heard and experienced that it causes some weird issues. Um, peripheral light correction, I have off. That's out with vignette, and I think it only works for Fujifilm lenses. Um, I don't have Fujifilm lenses, and so I don't uh, see the need to use that. If you see some vignette that you don't like in your shots, um, then feel free to add that. Mount adapter setting. This is, I, from my understanding, if it's a vintage lens or if it's an adapted lens and it doesn't have connections, then you can say, you know, I'm using a 50 millimeter lens. And so um, I want it to adjust. I think this is mostly for IBIS. I want it to adjust based off of this being a 50 millimeter. So that's what the mount adapter does. I have it accessible in my menu um, so I can change it if I need to. Autofocus. Okay, we're going to have to turn this into autofocus. Focus area is just to adjust the size of the box like this. And I like to keep it pretty much as big as it is for video, but I also don't use autofocus very much. Focus mode is going to be manual or continuous autofocus. Um, and for video, we usually would use either manual or continuous. We'll go through uh, autofocus or AFC because as far as manual focus, there's not much to change there. And so autofocus mode, uh, it's either going to be area or multi. That is uh, up to your situation. Um, area, if you can keep it you know, centered or you want to move around the box. Multi is going to use, I think, most of the um, focus points. And so it's up to you how you need to adjust that um, in your current situation. If see custom settings, I really did not notice much of a change when I adjusted these, to be completely honest. I have it to be a slow transition right here. So if you can look at the, the slow versus fast and how it, it pulls focus slowly. Um, I have that pretty much as slow as it'll go. And then this one is if it changes from one subject to the other, um, it'll lock on quickly or it will, um, I guess, hold. So if you did four and I moved out of frame, then it might take a little bit longer to pull focus. I have not noticed a difference, really. I think Fujifilm doesn't have the smoothest focus pulls. But this is also speaking from using my Sigma 18 to 35, which is a very old lens. Um, it probably doesn't have the best autofocus. It's definitely better than the old Fujifilm lenses for autofocus. Um, but I do want to try out some new Fujifilm lenses and see if they're smoother. From what I hear, it's a lot smoother. So um, that's going to be from everything I've seen. And, and I'll go ahead and actually link Philip Bloom's video. But the um focus pulls and all that is on a per use cases or per lens cases i should say and so he discovered that each lens you had to use a different setting for it to look natural organic and good and so you can do more watching on that um it probably hasn't changed much from the xh2s to the xt4 the F af illuminator stays off the face eye detection it stays on sometimes and I leave it on I auto for the most part like this I leave it on I auto realistically I could probably put it on left eye priority considering um, I wanted to stay focused on this side but uh, I think it does a decent enough job for how I use autofocus um, I do have a quick button for it to turn it off if I'm having issues with the autofocus um, if it's if it's not looking good again I rarely use autofocus, probably 5% of the time, only when I'm in front of the camera for the most part. Um, subject detection setting. So that's just going to be like animals and cars and all these. That's going to, like, if you don't know what to set it for on that, then we got some other things to figure out. You know what I'm saying? 
if if you if you're trying to track a a, a plane, is plane on here? Yeah. If you're trying to track a plane, then turn it to airplane. Um, same with train. I think this is actually crazy that they have all of these here. All that to say, I think you can figure that one out on your situation. AF plus MF seems weird to me. I don't like it. Um, I much prefer to like hold down the button to stop pulling focus. My manual focus is set to peak and it's red and high. I think that looks the best and easiest to adjust, but some people have preferences and they prefer yellow or whatever. Um, the focus check I have set to a custom button. And so it's super handy if you're pulling focus manually. Uh, instant AF setting I have as AFS. And so what I can do is I can hold down the autofocus button and it will in manual and it will grab focus on someone. You can also do continuous um, and it will, while you're holding it, it'll autofocus for you, if that makes sense. And then when you let go, it'll stop autofocusing. Um, depth of field scale, that's at the pixel. AF range limiter, I have off. Um, if you notice that your lens is always um, jumping way too close, um, or in a specific situation, if you're mostly infinity focused, but something crosses in front of you really close, then you can limit that. But um, I, I don't see many use cases where I need to do that. I have my touchscreen mode set to area. And so wherever I touch on the screen, uh, you can see here, if I get to it, then it'll adjust that box. And so easy enough. My focus check lock stays off. Uh, from what I gathered, this is a new setting to the XH2S. From what I've gathered about this, it will um, lock to where, well, if you read this, back to original frame after record starts. Keep the focus check after record start. It caused issues for me, so I keep it off. Basically, when I was zooming in on my adapted lens, it would punch in while I zoomed. Um, and while I, or while I tried to get focus, it would punch in and so it was super weird i keep it off now i don't see the need for it internal mic level adjustment uh, per use cases i don't ever need to adjust that external mic adjustment you might need to adjust um, that's going to be you you basically want your levels to peak at negative 12 decibels and so um, you'll want to adjust that however you need under manual if you need to go down because it's peaking at uh negative four then you're going to want to bump it down several decibels uh, mic jack setting, um, it's either going to be mic or line level. This is actually super handy. So mic level is going to be any um, microphone, basically. Line level, if you were to um, record a feed from uh, a recorder and you wanted to go out of the headphone jack, that's going to be line level. Um, another example, this would not be smart, but if you got an auxiliary cable and ran it from the DJ booth, let's say, and they're doing toasts and plugged in, then you would want that probably to be line level. The only time you want mic level is if it's a microphone that you're plugging in or you're plugging into the back of a microphone receiver. So there's no amplifier in the middle of that. Mic level limiter, I keep that on. All my camera audio ever for is for is for um, scratch audio. I never record the audio that I'm going to use in a film or a video uh, on my camera. And so the limiter seems to work fine for me in that case. Wind filter, I keep on. Um, I'm experimenting with it. For the other cameras, I don't know if they have wind filter, actually. Um, I've never messed around with it too much. But I'll have issues syncing uh, audio if it's super windy and I've tried the like dead cats on the little mics and it never they never stay on so that's never worked for me the low cut filter I keep that off if I want to cut low frequencies I would rather do that in post um, headphone volume is irrelevant for me I don't plug my headphones into this um, XLR mic adapter setting again if I'm going to record my professional audio I'm just gonna use an external source I have a Currently, I have a Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 um, Mark II, and I prefer to use that um, in that case. Time code, I don't use time code. I would love to eventually use time code, but it's just one more variable for me. I will say, 
Um, time code is certainly something that I would like to eventually use. Um, but I get by just fine with syncing with uh, software. So, okay, my user settings. So these are going to be, I mean, formatting is in here. You can actually get to format though by holding down the trash can icon and then the down arrow. It's different than it used to be. The old cameras was hold down the trash can icon and then push in the rear dial. Now it's hold down the trash can button and then hold down the down arrow and then it'll eventually take you to format. That's how I always get to format. Area setting, that's gonna be your time zone. Date and time, that's gonna be your current time. Time difference, uh, that's if you want it to be daylight saving times or not, I think. Oh no, sorry, it's not. Oh, uh, okay, cool. So. You can adjust it, I guess, based off of where you are at. Um, ah, cool. So, I'm at home. English language for me, but that might change um, based off your location. See what I did there? Um, my menu setting, I have not adjusted anything for photo because this is a video tutorial. My video, my menu settings. One sec. Mm. I have my movie setting list, which I'm not going to use. I honestly, I will probably rarely use uh, my movie setting list because of how effective the custom settings are. I used to really use it just to change frame rate um, and, and other settings like that but I can get by with just my custom dials now, which is amazing. I do have like uh, just a, things that I could change. Um, I have my movie setting list, my movie mode, um, my mount adapter settings. So if I do change to an 85 prime, then I can real quick go over to that and change it to 85 prime. Uh, media record settings, um, ISO mode boost. So if I do in the rare case wanna use boost, I can really quickly access it. Um, external mic level adjustment, since it is something that I would adjust um, on occasion, if I plugged in a mic for some scratch audio, um, then I have that right there. HDMI output settings. So when I'm recording tutorials like this on my Ninja, I can record the screen. Uh, data level settings. If I change to ProRes, um, I can quickly change to this. But again, all of these are in custom settings. So zebra level, um, this is one that I might actually use if I didn't have a monitor on me and I wanted to look at how the skin tones were exposed versus um, just what's about to clip. So 95% I have that there because I wanna just see what's about to clip. Um, so that's how the my menu settings are. Adjust them based off of your needs and what you constantly are looking. If you're looking in the menu system for something for a long time, then maybe you should add that to your menu. So then you don't have to constantly fish through there and find what you're needing. Sensor cleaning. So it's just whenever you turn it off, it cleans your sensor. Battery age. So you can check the age of your battery reset. I don't advise doing that unless you really want to. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay, cool. Sound setup. So I pretty much have not messed with this because it's all for photography stuff for the most part. Um, so yeah, if you did need to adjust your playback volume, you can do it in here. Um, audio playback, I'm actually gonna set to camera, I think, so then I can hear it playback in the camera. We are now in view mode setting. I have the shooting as the LCD only because um, I don't like when I'm holding it close to my body and it will go to the EVF. But I do have playback to where I can view both um, just in case I want to look and have it shielded if it's really bright outside. EVF is brightness. Currently I have it as auto, um, but I barely use my EVF, so it shouldn't make much of a difference. Um, I haven't touched the colors. They look pretty true to life. The LCD brightness, I have not touched because it seems bright enough. Um, that might go up depending on how sunny it is, but I use an external monitor typically. I have um, image display off. I have auto rotate displays on, um, and that's more of a photo thing. Preview exposure white balance in manual mode. I have 
that set to both so I can see what my exposure and white balance will look like. F-Log View Assist. I have this set to a custom button, but I almost always have it on. Electronic level setting. I have that set to off, but it's also a um, function button. Framing guideline. I just have your normal rule of thirds framing guideline. And then auto rotate PB. I don't even know what that is, man. Oh, auto rotate playback. Okay. So auto rotate playback, I have is off. Um, you can turn it on, but not really doing much photo and only video. I don't want it to flip on me um, if my camera's at a different angle. I do feet because I'm in the US and for some reason we think the metric system's useless. So I'm not using cinema lenses, but I know they use a T number. So that's what we have for that. Dual display settings. So we have focus on the left, frame on the right. I don't know much of the difference there. Display custom settings. Now we're getting into the good stuff. So I have my focus frame. I have my manual focus distance indicator, my histogram, my shooting mode, aperture, information, focus mode, photometry, shutter type, flash, which I don't think will show up if you're in video mode, continuous mode, Dual IS mode, white balance, film sim, dynamic range, and not all of these will show up if you don't have that setting. Um, but if you do, then it shows up. Cooling fan setting, frames remaining, which is probably really handy if you uh, are running low on your card. Um, image size quality, movie mode, and record time, which this one's really important. Image transfer order. Um, which I guess if you're using Bluetooth, it will um, show that you're transferring. Mic level, that's probably important. Guidance message, I don't know what that is. And battery level. Uh, I have those off and I'm not using it so I don't need to adjust the settings. Information contrast adjustment. Um, that would just be based off of your needs. I'm fine with standard. Location info, that's fine on. Sub monitor settings. So I just have in movie mode, I have the standard there. You can pause the video and um, adjust yours based off that. But that seems to be all I need for, um, for that. Sub monitor background color. I'm okay with black. Um, it seems to be good with me. And then transparent for both those. So the quick save menu I just have as eight. We'll go through the Q menu um, in a minute. Function settings, we will go through that in just a minute. Power zoom, I don't have a power zoom lens, so I'm not messing with that. Selector button setting, I have as FM. The command dial settings, I have as, for manual mode, I have as shutter speed on the front and f-stop in the back. I would love to make the back one ISO um, and adjust my aperture with my lens, but Fujifilm doesn't think that's a good idea for some reason. Fujifilm. This is my second video in a row. Please let us adjust that. Please. Shutter speed operation. I have us on. Command dial direction. I have everything in the right way. And this brings me up to my next topic. ISO. When you click ISO, it goes the opposite direction of what you would think was intuitive. Fujifilm. Please let us adjust that. Just add another thing that says... Well, no, just make it, if we have the rear command dial, then have it go that same direction. I understand you wanted to do it the way that it is on your traditional cameras with the dials, but I'm not loving it. Shutter AF, this would just be for photo. Um, I don't do auto exposure. And so shoot without lens. It, you have to have this on if you are going to use dummy adapters. And so I use a lot of dummy adapters because I use a lot of vintage lenses. So it's imperative that uh, that's on. On the other end, I have shoot without card off. And this I think is important because you don't want it to look like you're recording um, and you don't have a card in there. So, and, and it also helps, it makes you have two cards in there if you have that setting. Um, and I always wanna have two cards in there if I can. Lens zoom focus setting. This is going to be based off of your lens. If they're Fujifilm lenses, then you can adjust your focus ring. 
do what works for you. Um, linear is going to be a nice, just linear, um, if you were pulling focus on a normal lens. Nonlinear is going to be um, kind of ramped up, like if you be like a curve instead of a straight line. Surely that makes sense. Um, constant speed focus. So that will probably be how quick you turn it. Same thing with zoom. Um, constant speed zoom focus operation. I'm not sure what that is. Zoom ring rotate, same deal. If you want them to rotate opposite directions, then that's fine. You can set that up. Zoom focus control ring. So I would assume this is if you have a control ring on one of your lenses, you can set it to do zoom or focus. Auto exposure lock mode. I have it set to auto exposure and auto focus. I have set to when you're pressing the button is when it's gonna be active. You can also set it to be an on off switch. Auto white balance lock mode. To sum it up, um, you would have to hold down the button to keep the autofocus in one spot where you can turn it on and off and in between recordings, if you need to adjust your white balance, you can do that instead. ISO button setting. I don't think that's related to uh, what you would think ISO is. I don't, I think it's something to do with transferring your images. Touchscreen setting. I have the touchscreen setting on because I have a few uh, function buttons there. I have the double tap setting off though because uh, I feel like there's just too much room for error there with accidentally double tapping. The touch, touch function is on. Touch zoom on. Touch screen setting on. And then EVF touchscreen area settings off. Because I, I feel like if I'm looking in the EVF, my nose is messing it up. Um, and it just, I haven't figured out how to use that. Well, if you do, let me know how you, how you do use that. And then I don't have any lock settings. I haven't touched those. Power management. This one's important. And we'll talk about this in my later video with, um, with the temperature um, or with the overheating test. So I have auto power off. I'm gonna turn the camera off if I want it off and I'm gonna turn it on if I want it on. Performance I have to boost. I'm actually gonna experiment with this, but the battery life is so good that I don't, I don't feel like I need to go to normal or anything. But from what I'm gathering, it looks, from what I've, I've read, it looks like normal really affects mostly just the frame rate on the LCD and the EVF. Um, the EVF is set to 120p, which is kind of crazy. It looks really, it's actually a really quality EVF. Um, auto power off temp. You should turn this to high, no, um, no matter what. It will um, dramatically increase your record times, and you'll see that in an upcoming video. Save data setup. So I will be renaming all of my cameras. I'm in the process of doing that, but I highly suggest renaming them based off of um, your cameras and, and your workflow. I do have continuous as the frame number. Um, edit file name, it should be sRGB in most cases. Card slot setting I have set as backup. So select folders where you will change that um, file name and that's something I typically do um, A cam, B cam, C cam or something along those lines. Copyright info, that's fine if it's on. Um, you can enter your author's information or not. Geotagging on, because um, why not? So that concludes the setup there. Let's talk through the dials and how I have those set up and the custom settings, how I have those set up. So, so if you wanna access your function buttons quickly, then you can just hold down the display back button and then you can see those buttons. So um, I have the record button set as none other than record. Um, the ISO, ISO, white balance, white balance. Now I have that as face and eye. So if, if I have autofocus on and I want to turn autofocus off of the face and eye and just single point, then I can do that quickly. Um, I have zebras as this front button, um, so I can quickly turn zebras on and off. And I have your focus mode, so autofocus continuous or manual um, as this front button where the switch used to be. Okay, so this is where things get fun. So this movie crop mode, um, I talked about this in my previous video about my impressions on the camera and everything. This will crop into the sensor, but still maintain a 4K image. And so it'll crop in 1.4 um, times, almost, 
on top of the initial Super 35 crop. And so this will give you a little extra reach on your lens. And so I like to have quick access to this in case I feel like I want a little more reach and don't want to crop it in post. This will uh, set your autofocus um, zone, whether it be single point or uh, multi. This is your F-Log view assist, like I talked about. Um, you can turn it on to the Rec. 709 image, or you can turn it off to see the flat image. This will switch through your uh, IBIS settings. I have histogram to swipe up. I have the level, adjust the level settings to swipe left. And then I don't have any other settings. So I have these because um, they're really obvious if I kind of do bump the screen. Um, so it's easy to adjust. I don't like to have things that, like I wouldn't want my IBIS to be on the screen because it's easy to mess up and then realize you've been shooting without IBIS for a while. So that's why I don't like the touch functions to be things that aren't glaringly obvious. Um, these are as is. The Q button is as is. Um, and then view mode is as is. Let's go through this Q button real quick. So when you click Q, you got your mode because I think you have to have that there, which kind of sucks. Um, you have your Kelvin value, um, ISO and shutter speed. I have these there um, if I want to do it without um, like touching the dials. And so I can do it all touch screen. Um, and then your movie mode resolution, your aperture. I have a vintage lens adapted, so I can't adjust the aperture, but you would be able to. The If I run across a cat and I want to... Um, Focus on the cap, then I can adjust that. And this is the touchscreen mode. Um, and so I can change it from area to focus if I click it. I don't really use the Q screen much, um, but I did set those up because I figured they could be handy um, if I needed to. Next is going to be our custom settings. So let's walk through our custom settings real quick. Custom one, I have that set to my 4K60. So, um, in situations where I don't have dialogue, I just record in 4K60 for most of the time. And so um, that's how we have custom one. Um, we can actually go and see exactly what these settings are. So in movie mode, we got 4K60, we got 422 10-bit um, long op and 360 megabits a second in F-Log2. So if we were to go to custom two custom two is basically the same settings but now we're in 24 or 23.98 um, and we have 200 megabits a second um, since we don't need as much um, information there and so that's really the only difference custom three is what i use for my open gate um, three two aspect ratio 6.2k um, pro res and so I'm messing with HQ and LT and 422. Um, but as it is, I um, this is what I have it set to. I do have proxy on for this. I have custom four set to a high frame rate mode. And so what this is, is 120p um, at 4K um, and F-Log. Um, I will make it consistent. If I choose to use F-Log and not F-Log 2, then I'll make it consistent with that. Um, but that's where we're at with that. It's just the 120p mode. And last but not least is um, my 4K24. Um, but it actually automatically has IBIS off, and it's a slow shutter. And so if you see, it kind of has like a, a cool effect to it. Um, it's something that I always wanted to experiment more with. Um, but you had to turn it to all I to do this. And so this is actually all I where everything else is long up. And so that's where we're at with our five custom settings. That's really close. I actually have to scoot down a little bit. <laughs> if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching this video um, and seeing what I think are the best settings for video. Uh, it will maybe change um, down the road. And if it does, uh, I'll let you guys know. But uh, 
Let me know what settings you have liked to use or what you are finding different than I have. Um, if there's particular settings that you feel I overlook, then um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, as always, I'd love if you subscribed. Um, that would mean the world. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.